What's up, y'all? It's Thomas Piper of the People's Republic of Sound, and this is Beat Design, where we do live improv electronic music. If you like what we're doing, subscribe down below. For those of you who are new, usually with this show, I'm using Ableton, and I'm making up beats off my head. No pre-planned, pure improvisation. Um, today, I'm going to do it with a rolly block, and I'm going to do a rolly block review. So if you like what this was, go check out my other videos so you can see what we are doing. Um, I also do lots of shows. You can check my website, thepeoplesrepublicofsound.com, to see where I'm performing in your area. Um, like I said, I got these this beautiful LiPod Block M in. So I want to show you it off and do a quick my thoughts review kind of thing. I'm not a reviewer, but I hope you'll dug it and dig it. Deuces. What's up, y'all? This is the review portion of Beat Design. Um, today I'm going to go over a little bit about how we used and used the setup. Um, this is the Rolly Blocks. It's a modular system. Full disclosure, Rolly did give me these blocks. These two blocks, at least. Not this beautiful Seaboard block, though. I love this. And I love the Rolly Blocks, too. I have another block that I, I bought as well. The older one. This is the new one. This is a light plaid um, light, light, light pad block M with a control block, and it's the control box a live block. Now the main difference between the the light pad block M and the older light pad block is the ridges on the top. It's a little thicker. Um, sensitivity is different. I heard the battery life is a little better as well. It is really good. So that's the main difference between the two. Um, I'm using it with the noise app, and how the noise app works is it gives you. You can connect the blocks via Bluetooth. Uh, connect the block via Bluetooth. And it gives you four tracks to work with. Here's a. It's a lot like the push. So for the reason I'm going over this is because for those grid players out there who've been watching me play the push, the light pad block works exactly like a push. This is. Whatever. You can play the same scales, works in the same mode. Um, so if you use a push and you've been playing a push, this will feel familiar to you, and that's why I like it. Um, it has drum pads. A lot like Ableton, but it only has four tracks. Um, excuse me, it has, let's see what else we have. Yeah, a lot like Ableton, it only has four tracks, but um, it has a song section too where you can do loops. 
just like Ableton, <laughs> and um, a mixer section. And the beauty of this is that because this device, its screen is kind of can be anything. It, it's not dedicated buttons; it's just a surface. You can use it as a mixer. You could use it as anything, and um, it does work pretty good. Um, now, um, with the noise app, there are a couple of things that I don't like. I'll just get them out the way. Um, I wish it, you had a way to change your quantize setting or turn off your quantize if you want to do that kind of fly low dilla, you know, offbeat kind of thing. So that would be nice. Um, there's one major thing. I wish it had an overdub so that you could overdub if you're doing drums and you want to, you got all these cool drum sounds and you run out of fingers. <laughs> but um, it's still a great app to do a quick sketch. You know, I, I do like it. Now, but besides that, it's great. It has the MPE, which is all this, um, I think it's multi-touch polyphonic expression or something like that. I hope I didn't butcher it. If I did, you guys will let me know in the comments um, where you can do lift, strike. See that? All these cool expressive things. The Seaboard block does the same thing as well. And... Um, but this does it, and that's so. When you see the price, one hundred seventy nine dollars, it does way more than a regular controller. So keep that in mind. It's great when you're using it with Logic or GarageBand iOS because it has MPE support, so you can do all the strike and lift, all that kind of crazy expressive stuff. And there's a workaround for Ableton that I use. It it takes a little bit to set up. You set up a template, but you can get those same expressive things with Ableton as well. Now, one of my complaints with the um, first block was that um, the first light pad block was that it didn't feel it, it was almost too sensitive. You would either get too loud or too soft. You couldn't get in any middle grounds. And they've improved that, especially within the app, within the noise app. It's really cool. It still needs some work when you use it outside of the noise app. So if you're using it with Ableton and things, they could still work on that and get that, um, you know, tightened a little bit. But they improved it so much in the noise app and it makes it a lot more usable and um, sounds a lot better now. Um, the battery life on this is great. The control blocks allow you to do, let me reset this block, allow you to do like octave because this has no octave control. This has an octave control. This block does not work though. It, well, it works, but it doesn't do the optic control in GarageBand or Ableton. So remember that if you're going to use it in an external DAW or iOS app, that you know you you may not have octave control unless you use their blocks dashboard on the Mac or PC. This also shines as a controller, and it's funny. I bought it to be like almost a little push, but what I'm really using this for. Um, besides the little quick beat making on noise or whatever, is a way to launch clips, to affect, um, to run effects and be a, almost like a you know some controller um, for um, Ableton. And it just works really great at that. The little things that you take for granted, like one, you it's wireless. So you're on stage and you can literally control something on stage and move around and walk around and get from behind the table I'm a fan of that, um, and it works really good in Ableton. The integration of that has been pretty well thought out. Even some of the issues that I have, the little gripes that I have with um, with sensitivity, their blocks dashboard can make it work. So, um, you know, as an Ableton controller, it's very good. And, um, you know, I've grown to like it a lot. I pack it at my show, and it does a lot of things for me. So, you know... It, it it is so much more than what you think it is and what it you know I think they're trying to sell it one way but it does that pretty darn well um, so I think you know to me to buy you'll be surprised what you use it for um, like I said the noise app only thing it needs is a, a overdub function um, and um, you know maybe a little less sensitivity so that you can play it better um, but I preface that too, like when you play drums, it sounds, it's great, you know, it feels good. It's just, you know, this, the grid playing. I'm a grid player, so maybe I'm a little biased in that way. Um, 
And I'm going to do a review on setting it up with Ableton. Oh, this, I love my Seaboard block. It doesn't need a review. Just get it. it it's great. It, it works. It's, it's wonderful. Built what pretty well. Um, I have a little issue with like a flap thing, but anyway, <laughs> but no, it's really great. Um, and it works well with the system. So, you know, if you're going to get something, you know, I would definitely get that as a portable keyboard. You won't feel anything. And it's just, it's great. All right. I'm out. Tom Spiper, People's Republic Sound. That was my quick thoughts or review. I don't know. Um, oh, Seaboard Block. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you dig it or didn't do it, but I'm not a reviewer, but I, I wanted to share my thoughts with it. Deuces. <laughs>